Justice Gilbert Gottfried Nitten. <laughs> I, I fucked up my own name. I got Keep my it in, name Frankie. Wrong. Keep it in. Okay. I got my name wrong. That's that's how bad that's it's an honest getting mistake. worse. Okay. <laughs> I need my name written on a cue card. Gilbert now. Roland. Yes. Uh Hi, I'm Gilbert Gottfried, and this is Gilbert and Frank's Amazing Colossal Obsessions with my co-host Frank Santo Padre. It is indeed. Uh, where do we go with this one? Okay, I'm going to start, and we're going to talk about an actor. And I know you're going to talk about an actor, but this is an actor that we've been trying to get on the show, and he's been in New York shooting a miniseries, which is actually how he just came to yeah. mind. I just saw a promo. He's playing Bernie Madoff. Oh, in one of these TV movies, I thought, who am I going to talk about today? And I was wandering around the house and then I saw this promo for uh, the Madoff story starring the great Richard Dreyfus, who we have talked about on this show many, many times. Yes. In fact, you recommended the apprenticeship of Dodie Kravitz. Yes. And I talked about uh, the Goodbye Girl. And there's there's a little film he did, Jaws. A little film yeah. called Jaws. <laughs> But uh, a, a very interesting man and a very interesting life. And, you know, he's a Brooklyn kid. Yes. He's born in, the Brooklyn, in Brooklyn in 47, and his parents moved to L.A., and he enrolled in Beverly Hills High School, where he befriended Joey Bishop's son, Larry Bishop. And Rob- oh, that's another one who's in my bit. Joey Bishop. Joey Bishop. Ted Bissell. <laughs> <laughs> it's a callback. Rick Bissell. <laughs> <laughs> and Jacqueline Bishop. <laughs> By the way, the only reason, and you corrected me last week, the only reason you knew how to pronounce Jacqueline Bissett is because of that bit. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Dreyfus uh, went, to, uh, went to Beverly Hills High, but he's a Brooklyn kid, and he befriended Rob Reiner, and they were friends for life, which is why he's the narrator in Stand By Me. And um, uh, interesting actor. Uh, you know, he, he did a lot of TV in the 60s. You can see him on things like Peyton Place and Bewitched, and Gidget, and The Big Valley. The first time I ever saw him was in a movie we've talked about called Hello Down There. Oh, yes. Do you remember this picture? That they're, they're like living in an underground survival. Yes. Well, it was, a, I think it's, yeah. a, I'm trying to remember the plot. It's Ken Berry, yes. for, former podcast guest. Oh, yes. Ken Berry, uh, and Merv Griffin's in it. Wow. And I'm trying to remember, I think Roddy McDowell's in it. Uh, oh, does he, does... I think Richard Dreyfus sings a love song to a goldfish. You got it. <laughs> you, you're, you're a sick man with a sick memory. I think it's the first time I ever saw him in this bad comedy called Hello Down There, which was kind of like those those Disney comedies. Oh, sort, yes. Sort of like the Boatniks or one of those things, but it's not. I don't think it's a Disney comedy. I think Bacchus turns up in it. I, oh, I wow. think Merv Griffin's in it. I'm, I'm probably getting the cast half wrong, but it, it's a stunt where he has to live, the family has to live underwater. Uh, they have to be the first family to live underneath the ocean. Yeah, one, and, one of those plots where you go, didn't anybody hear that? And go, <laughs> That's the worst right. fucking idea But it's ever. got this wonderful cast. Anyway, Dreyfus is a young hippie rock singer who sings a love song to a goldfish. And and after that, you know, he bounced around. He turns up in uh, Valley of the Dolls. Oh, yeah. He turns up as Babyface Nelson in Dillinger. Yeah. Then came American Graffiti and Dodie Kravitz and then Jaws. And then the rest is history because Jaws made him a, a superstar. And uh, Jaws was 75. Then he did Close Encounters. And I think... He was the original choice to play Bob Fosse. That's correct. In all that the Joe jazz. Gideon character, and yeah, he was friends it. with Roy Scheider. Right, and he used to complain to Roy Scheider every night. I'm not getting it wrong with the director. We're just constantly arguing, and then Roy Scheider grabbed the part. That's right. That's right. We've talked about it on the show. There was a quote. It's in it's in a in a, a book I read about Fosse and and Dreyfus was having second thoughts about quote his fat Jew ass parading across the street, <laughs> across the street. I, I and and I quote, um, you know, he was the youngest uh, man to win best uh, actor for the Goodbye Girl. Twenty nine. Oh, wow. Twenty nine. Wow. And then there was a bit of a fall. 
and he was making uh, he fell on hard times you know he 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 got involved uh, he was a party he was a bit of a party boy made a couple of films nobody saw the competition a movie called the big fix which i oh, actually like yes liked. and now is is it the big fix where he composed he wrote a song called i want to be seduced that's the one which he sang yeah. on saturday night live yes. when he hosted it but the big fix, I just finally caught up to it after all these years. And it's, he plays a private eye called Moses Wine, who was a former radical, a former 60s radical. It's very interesting. John Lithgow's in it. Um, it has an interesting cast. It's very slow. Oh, yeah. But rewarding if you're a Dreyfus fan. And then he bounced back with Stand By Me, Tin Men, which, which we talked about with, uh, with Jackie Martling, with uh, Danny DeVito and Jackie oh, Gale. Yeah. And then Stakeout. With Emilio Estevez and a, a movie he's terrific in called Once Around. Uh, I don't know if you know that movie. No. Uh, see if you can find it. And then what about Bob, with oh, Bill yes. Murray, where he's yeah. the where he's the therapist. And uh, you know, even even when he struggled, even in in subpar films, he was never bad. He was always always fun to watch. And then we had Joan and David on the show. Oh yeah. Joan uh, uh, Joan uh, uh, Kramer and. Um, and David Healy, who are friends of his, and they were telling us that, that he's also a, a savant, kind of like we are. He knows yeah. everything about old Hollywood. So I always thought he'd be great for the show. Oh, he'd be terrific. And I, I still would like to ask him uh, how his friendship with Roy Scheider was. After, after, he did, yeah. after, after Scheider got such good notices yeah. for all that jazz. Other films he's good in, Down and Out in Beverly Hills, Paul oh, Mazursky yeah. movie, uh, Night Falls on Manhattan with our buddy Dominic Chianese. Uh, he's really got a terrific body of work. He does comedy well. He's great in dramas. He's he's terrific in everything. And um, read an interesting story about him doing research about John Gilgood. He was living in L.A. He was a young actor, and he was saying that uh, uh, there was no chance that he wasn't going to make it. He was yeah. uh, he was already, people were saying that, that he was going to be a sure thing and, he went to see John Gilgood perform in L.A. with a bunch of his friends, and they said he really went there with the intention of making fun of Gilgood, oh, who, yeah. who, was a ha- who in his mind was a has-been. And he said Gilgood walked out onto the stage and started to deliver his lines, and not only did he not want to make fun of him, but it was a, it was a, it was a, uh, a life-changing moment oh, wow. for him, and that's when he knew that, uh, that, that that's what he was going to do. So I thought that was an interesting story. So, if we can ever get him, oh yeah, he'd be a great guest to have. I think I think Richard Dreyfus is living with Papillon Seuss. No, he is yeah. not. <laughs> He's living in San Diego. <laughs> Papillon Seuss. He's going. Oh, Richard, me so horny. <laughs> Everything comes back to Papillon Seuss yeah. and Whit Bissell. <laughs> Oh, anyway, we'll work on him. It's a tall order, but hell, never thought we'd get Bruce Dern either. Oh my God, Bruce Dern was great. Wasn't that wonderful? Yeah, we're so we're so I'm so gratified and by Bruce you. Dern was one of those, and we noticed it. And everybody who works with Bruce Dern notices this. They go, he remembers. Every single detail. Yeah, he was perfect. It's like like a savant. He was the perfect guest. Yeah, I mean, you you mention a movie that you barely remember seeing. Well, you brought up the incredible two headed transplant. Yes. He was wrong. He was right on it. Oh yeah, yeah right. he was on it. Right. He remembered who wrote it, who did the makeup, they wanted me to the eat lighting. A baby. Yes. <laughs> <You're right. laughs> so what do you got this week? Okay, sir. Here's his one. I, 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 I don't know if I'm a big fan of this guy or I just wanted to say his name. Go for it. And that there was an actor, Skelton Knags. Holy <laughs> shit! <laughs> your your colossal obsession is Skelton who? Yes, Skelton Knags. Well, I'm I'm going for an obvious one. <laughs> Oh my! You know, you're, I'm going you're making this guy for, up. No, there was an actor named Skelton Knags. Wow! And he looked like his name sounded. <laughs> he sort of was, like Arnold Arnold Stang. Uh, exactly, <laughs> right. exactly. Right. And and 
uh, Skelton Canags, uh, he was like, he, he was, his teeth were crooked and, and discolored and rotten, and his face was all pockmarked. And he would pop up in, like, horror films. Like, he was in House of Dracula. I don't have my phone on me. As, I'm dying as, to know who this guy yeah, is. He was one of the uh, villagers, the angry villagers. In which? <laughs> in House of Dracula. Wow. House of Dracula. That's the one where my other, one of my other favorites, Onslow Stevens. Well, I know Onslow Stevens. Yeah. Onslow Stevens is a doctor who is going who finds a cure for Dracula's vampirism <laughs> <laughs> and Lon Chaney Jr.'s like lycanthropy <laughs> Which was so, even as a little kid. I think it's lycanthropy. Lycanthropy, yeah. yeah. I was. I would watch this as a little kid going, wait, wait a minute. There's a scientific reason why he changes into the wolf man. And it had something to do with this thing that uh, put pressure on his cranium. <laughs> and they found some kind of mud underground by accident <laughs> that they applied to Cheney's head to loosen up the pressure on his cranium, <laughs> thus curing him. Of course. Or turning into the wolf man. And, and in House of Dracula, Cheney has a mustache. Now, you, why would a guy who changes into a werewolf every night decide, hey, I think I'll grow a mustache. That's a good look. Yeah. <laughs> You'd think he was traumatized and would want to be hair free. Yes. I, <laughs> and Skelton Canags turns up in this. Yeah, uh, Skelton Canags. And Frankie, he was could also you look a, up Skelton Canags for me and tell the, me? The Invisible <laughs> Man returns. I think Gilbert's having a seizure. <laughs> What does this guy look like? Of course, I'm going to recognize ugly him as soon as Frankie as comes in here. All hell. Really? Yeah. We talking like Harry Dean Stanton, ugly Rondo. Oh Hatton my ugly? God, Har- Harry Dean Stanton's Tyrone Power. Really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I I I think Ferdarosa is going to be coming in with a a skeleton connection. <laughs> here he comes. Here comes Fra- Frankie. What do you got? Here comes the great Frank Verderosa, our engineer at Nutmeg Post. Yes, he's Does he have his name right? Skelton Knags? I would would pronounce it Nags, but what do I know? Nags. Is it K-N? They called him a male 40 answer to Papillon (laughs) Susan. A non-Asian oh, 40s man. Well, Onslow Stevens, wasn't that a name that that played a significant role in your childhood? Yes, in my childhood. I have never seen. Have I? I have never seen this actor in my life. You've never seen. Sk- oh, now I know oh, who he yeah. is. Oh, yeah. lordy! Not an attractive man. Wow. <clears throat> That's yes. I know who he is. I know who he is. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> he was one of those skeleton. I would imagine it's nags. Nags. Yeah, you wouldn't say the K. Oh, I like Knags, <laughs> Knags. better. Skelton Knags. It, it, it sounds more like he looks. Knags. That's him. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's him. Wow. Not a good-looking man. Wow. <laughs> he makes Ernest Thesiger oh, <laughs> look God. like Dirk Bogard. <laughs> But what was the Onslow Stevens story? Oh, when I was a little kid. Thank you, Frankie. Uh, in in because uh, I was like you know this freak who would watch old movies hard, on TV. Hard to believe. Yeah, <laughs> and be obsessed. And so I was a little kid in elementary school, and it was either it could have been kindergarten, and the teacher was playing a game with us where she would say. Uh, two letters, like initials, and we'd have to come up mm-hmm. with, you know, who it was. Like, you know, if you'd say, like, you know, J.K., John Kennedy, or, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, B.H., Bob Hope. And, and she, at one point, she goes, O.S., and me, 
a little kid, I'm like four years old or something, I jump up excited and scream out, Anslo Stevens. <laughs> <laughs> Let me guess, it wasn't Anslo Stevens. No. <laughs> yeah, absolutely no one. Oscar no. Schindler? Yeah. <laughs> That would have that would have sufficed. <laughs> that would have been a more popular name to kindergarten. Uh, kids. Olivier Sarkozy, if he had been born yet. Is that his name? Wow, Onslow Stevens. I have never heard. I mean, I've seen his face. Skelton Connects. Yes. You have a big career? You make a lot of films? He seemed to have made a bunch. I think he had the kind of career that Rondo Hatton had. I see. Just so someone who like, looked scary. And had to be cast in these kind of in, in, in horror roles. Yeah. Like without oh, like this a guy uh I I wonder if he's still around. Michael Berryman. Oh, sure. Sure, yeah. from the hills have eyes. Yeah, yeah. and he's an, he's one of those guys. Right, he had some kind of disorder or something, and he looks just weird. He didn't have the the agromegaly. Uh, the Michael Berryman could. <laughs> well, you know, or as they called it in tarantula, acromegaly. Acromegaly, like, like an acromegaly party. <laughs> they were having an acromegaly. <laughs> Well, Jack Elam was an actor that was always cast. Yeah, as he a, was like, had a lazy had eye a lazy that was eye. off to the side. Right. We could do a whole show just on deformed character in actors. Fact, Jack Elam, yeah. I believe. Worth looking up, guys. Was, was in a a terrible uh, t- failed TV show called, I, I think it was called Me and Frankenstein. Was this about the kid who had the aging disease? No, no. This is... This is about a young guy who uh in I guess is a grandson of Dr. Frankenstein and he gets uh he uh you know inherits the castle and I think Jack Elam is is the Frankenstein monster. Unbelievable. I, I, I either dreamt this or, or yeah. which is possible, or Jack Elam's in a movie, a TV movie about a kid who has a. God forgive me, I can't think of the name of that. There, there is that disease. Yeah, I remember that one where like babies look like hundred year old yes, men, and he befriends Jack Elam. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Did I? <laughs> is this a fever dream I had? And and I think. Uh, it it's not Jack Elam's not playing a character. <laughs> it's about a guy with this disease who befriends actor oh, Jack Lord. Elam. <laughs> that may be true. Jack Elam may have played himself. Yeah, we're gonna look this up. We're gonna look this up. Frankie, get the uh, get the Google machine ready. So so your obsession, <laughs> and I'm and, deeply upset. And boy. Is that an obsession? And I masturbate about it every night. <laughs> to Skelton Connect. Connect. Ske- Skelton Connect. <laughs> I think he was also in in one of the Basil Rathbone Sherlock Holmes really? pictures. Really? Well, now I'm going to now I'm going to join the Skelton Connect fan Skelton club. Skelton Connects. <laughs> what about the Skelton Connects Wow Show in the seventies? <laughs> With Terry Gar. Oh my lord! Or, or the t- the morning talk show waking up with Skelton Connects. <laughs> Skelton Connects now with an exclamation point. Skelton Connects AM. <laughs> and then there was the new Skelton Connects show oh, yeah. with Hope Lang, where he, where he moved to the desert. Okay. See, they could never accept him, though, with a new wife. Incredible. Because in his old show, his wife was Evelyn Anchor. <laughs> Not Una O'Connor. Uh, I'm going to go home and do some research on this yes. fellow. So, but that is that is an obsession. Yes. That is living up yes. to the title. Yes. <laughs> so your your obsession to sum, to sum up is Skelton Connect. As but I went for the popular. You did. What? You did. You're a front runner. <laughs> and mine was an obscure actor named Richard Dreyfus. <laughs> Richard who? Richard. <laughs> yes. Doesn't matter. Oh, hilarious. Well, this has been. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> 
Skelton Kinnag, amazing I, colossal. Yes, I'm Gilbert Gottfried with my co-host Frank Santo Padre, and this has been Gilbert's amazing colossal Skelton Kinnag. <laughs> I'm doing Burt Mustin next week. <laughs> Yes, the guy who was – talk about a guy born he old. looked like a chicken. Yes. <laughs> he was one of those guys. He may have been 15 when he was doing those movies. <laughs> he's in the Egghead Vincent Price episode of Batman. Oh, yes. And he's a chicken farmer because he looks he, like a was chicken. Was he also in the Jack Benny show? Probably. Probably. And – you guys yeah. all know Burt Mustin if you're listening to yeah, this. Yeah, he's, I, I think, on Andy Griffith. Everything. Pop- he was a regular on Andy Griffith. He was Mr. Quigley on All in the Family. Yes. Yeah. And he was one of those guys who just always looked like he was 500 That's years it. old. That's it. So now I don't have to do Burt Mustin. Well, we'll do it. <laughs> we can still do it. I'll move to Dub Taylor. <laughs> <laughs> who was definite, definitely on the Andy Griffith show. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm exhausted. Who you to have a? He you to have that kind of yeah. uh, New Orleans accent. Yeah, you guys know Dub Taylor. How great! And he popped up on the on Cosby with, as with play, you. Yeah, wow. Dub Taylor. He was supposed to be an old jazz buddy of that guy who played Bill Cosby's father. Right, the one who used to go, "Oh, Bill." Yes, I remember, <laughs> Bill. Now, why would you say a thing like that? Now, since we talked about Gene Autry, and I'm going to (laughs) wrap. Okay. (laughs) Dub Taylor played a Gene Autry-like sports owner, because Gene Autry owned the California Angels baseball team, on the original, on the uh, the Odd Couple series. Okay. Dub Taylor. Oh, wow. When Rene Santoni was the Eskimo kid who was the quarterback. Do you remember that episode in season one? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm going deep here. There was some strange Odd Couple. Yeah, Dub Taylor. Who was in everything? Do you remember? I got I, no. I gotta go. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> do I remember who? Uh, there was an an episode, the one uh, episode of The Odd Couple without a laugh track. Yes, it's the one where they get locked in the basement. Was that the one? Yeah. Or I thought it was the one with with the Playboy Mansion. Oh, it's that one too. Yeah, maybe it would. They toast too. Yeah, they tried it. Yeah, yeah just, you're right. Well, John Aston yes, was playing a Hugh Hefner uh, character. Yes. Yeah, yeah, you're right. That's all I got. Okay, that's all Say I goodnight, got, Say goodnight, Skelton. Too. Okay. <laughs> <laughs>